Hey, what's going on today, guys? Today, I'm going to be unboxing the new Zotec RTX 20 Ti card. It's an AMP edition. So, as you saw in my most recent videos, I already did purchase an EVGA 20 Ti. And as you can see my test bench there, I decided if I, since I have space for another slot, why not put another one there? So I, I also did buy this NVIDIA uh, 3 slot NV link bridge here. Hopefully uh, I can successfully connect both these cards and get even more performance than what I currently have. But anyway, I'll get more into that later on in the video. Anyway, so uh, back to the card, here's the front of the case. Now I'll, I'll show the back uh, back uh, in a bit more detail so as you can see right there the, the, the tuning software is Firestorm that's if you want to control the LEDs uh, or do anything uh, relevant to the span of the card for any overclocking I just use MSI Afterburner so here are the specifications features minimums system requirements here's the side of the box there's the other side and there's the top So it does have labeling on uh, every side of all eight sides of, of the box. All right, so let's start off by unpacking it from the right side here. Now here's the internal box. It's covered in a. a like a, a transparent plastic. This is, this is something that really caught my attention. Uh, it, I think it's only relevant for the Zotac brand. Anyway, so as you can see, if I move the plastic either in the left or right direction, it, sh it, it has an optical illusion as if the fans are artificially spinning. And yeah, it's, it's by far probably the neatest thing I've ever seen in any packaging of any product. So now I'm going to remove the protective plastic cover here. You can see it says Zotex Gaming up at the top there. Thought there was going to be a CD in here, but yeah, it's it's a way to it's 2018. There's no way they'd provide a CD in in cards these recent. So first of all, here's a marketing pamphlet. I'll let you guys read that quickly. Feel free to pause the video if you want to look at this in further detail. It's a little form uh, requesting me to download the latest drivers. And then of course here's the instruction manual. As usual, I'll probably never read this. So that's, yeah, that's all the papers that came with the card. Now, as far as physical amenities that came with the card, it came with two, uh, two dual six pin inputs to eight, eight pin outputs for power. I'll show one of them up close to the camera. So you put two uh, six pin power cables into these these two slots and then as a result you're outputted with one eight pin. You'll see later on in the video but just as a heads up this card does use a dual eight pin power connector 
One of them looks just like that. Now here's the part you guys have all been waiting for. Unraveling the card itself. Just gonna stand up and show this better to the camera here. So there's a, there's a whole card right there. Here's, I have large hands. Here's my hand in, in hand size in comparison. It's pretty long, and it's as you can see on the back, it does use a reference PCB, but it, the the cooler it extends a bit out. That's how large it is, and the the GPU chipset is just on the other, other side here. I guess for better cooling, they, they didn't have the back plate for this part. There's a PCI connector. There's an NVLink connector. Something that uh, caught my attention to were, were the fans. They're not just uh, ordinary cheap, cheap fans. They actually have a uh, little little detail, little notches on at the end. I guess that's for uh, better better acoustic performance, so it runs quieter. You can see they're like two. Two, two plastic ridges, one on the outside here, the one on the inside. And then for the for the video outputs, same as a reference. You have a display display port here, HDMI display port. This is a USB C connector, and then another display port. And on the other end, you can see four heat pipes. They run throughout the card. Then as I mentioned earlier about the power connectors, here are the two A-pin connectors. As far as aesthetics for RGB, all, all it's gonna have is a, right here on the label, there's gonna be an LED. You can, uh, with the Zotec software, you can adjust to have this any any desired color you want. Personally, I'm gonna have mine turned off because I'm I'm not really into aesthetics. So yeah, that's a card. Just as a heads up, this is a NVLink three three socket connector that I'm going to be using. So yeah, now I'm going to install my system.
Hey guys, so I appreciate Miz this far in the video. I personally had a lot of fun building this rig. I mean, with the two 2080 Ti's with the MV link connected in SLI, as of November 2018, this is the absolute best you can have technology-wise for any gaming setup. In terms, in terms of the, the design, I, I have the EVJ at the bottom. That's because it's it's a three slot, so it wouldn't fit at the top. And then, the, of course, the Zotec is at the top. Uh, there's, I mean, I admit it is a little bit crowded. Unfortunately, I, I was initially planning to use a four slot MV link bridge, but unfortunately, my motherboard it's the X399A by Asus and, and uh, it didn't allow for a four slot to be used. But I mean, nevertheless, it, it's it still remains a uh, like the cars do 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 have adequate cooling since uh, since major plus is that of course you can see it's an, an open bench and yeah as you can see there is that's my hand size in comparison uh, right there you can see that I'm using a, a two dual a pin connectors just to power the graphics card that's pretty insane I mean that alone is probably drawing at least 600 watts while under uh, while both the cars are under a load uh, because of that power draw. I had to upgrade to the Corsair, the EX1600i power supply. Another great thing about that power supply is its remarkable efficiency because it uses gallium nitrate capacitors. I can go, I have another video going to that later on for detail, but right there, yeah, that's my Corsair H115i liquid cooler and it's cooling the my CPU, which is Ryzen Thunderbird 1950X. This liquid cooler connected to my CPU does an incredible job because allows me to get the Fever 1950X all 16 cores to 4.0 GHz and the voltage is at 1.4. I mean with, that takes a lot of CPU cooling to to, uh, to have that adequately performing without any, any hiccups. Anyway so right here I I have uh, this was a major success because I finally got the, the computer to detect both the video cards. I was having a little trouble before because I kept on having to reinstall the drivers and etc. It was kind of annoying, but that was a major success right there. Anyway guys, feel free to leave in the comment section any suggestions you have for future videos. I wish you all the best of luck in your future compiling builds. Goodbye now.